All right, I'm, I'm here to share an experience that I just just experienced maybe just less than an hour ago. Um, I just got robbed by gunpoint and it's the first time that anybody ever um, you know that I ever got robbed like that and any anytime anybody th ever threatened me with a gun before. Uh, my wife is sitting right next to me right now and and I'm sharing with her the story of what happened. And I'm also sharing it with the audience, you know, right now. <clears throat> so, basically, like I was, um, I was thinking about getting an iPhone, and there's like this iPhone 12 that I found on uh, OfferUp, and <clears throat> it was like weeks ago. I put in an offer for it. Never heard back from the, the people. I probably offered like three different, four different people, like what they asked for, and like that was weeks ago like maybe like two weeks ago and all of a sudden I get a message today saying are you still interested in it so the iPhone 12 I think is running for like twelve hundred dollars or something and he was selling it for six hundred and it's a picture of like a all I saw was a picture of a white dude selling the phone mm -hmm. right and and then <clears throat> he's like six hundred and he's like all right we're supposed to meet up so he could he said could I, could I pick it up and then I said yes, and I'm like, what's the address? He gave me the address. And I saw that the address is maybe about 35 minutes away. I wasn't familiar with that area, but it was about 35 minutes away in the south, like by, by, by the loop. So <clears throat> he said, um, I said, all right, you know, I'm gonna come on my way. I'll be there around 12.30. And then from there, I text him when I'm on the, on the way. And then he said, all right, you know, can you let me know when you're 15 minutes away? So I'm driving and like 15 minutes later, you know, 15 minutes left on the GPS, I let him know, he's like, all right. So I get, you know, I, I kind of get lost because there's like all this downtown is just kind of hectic. Yeah. But then I was like looking around, finally found the area. And right when I got off the exit, it wasn't like that, that downtown feeling anymore. But it was near downtown. But as soon as I got off the exit, it was kind of like, kind of like more run down. So as soon as I I drove out of that exit, I'm like, man, this doesn't this area. Because I'm thinking I'm gonna be buying it from downtown. Yeah. So and I didn't know if it was a private residence. I didn't know if it was a business location. I just put in the GPS, and then when I got off the exit, that area was just kind of more run down. So that kind of like made me feel like. All right, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? And then I pull up to that address, and then it's basically like a home, like not a home, but like a duplex. Yeah. And I was on that street, and that that area, it just didn't. It more like a rundown, more more of a poorer area. Yeah. And you know, um, and then I I text the guy I'm here, and then. I look out the, like, I kind of already felt like, you know what, I don't know what's going to happen, so I I took off my seatbelt, and I I turned off the car, you know, to wait, and I didn't know if somebody's going to run up on me or something like that, so that's why I took my seatbelt off, and then when I said I'm here, that the guy, he came out, it was like a, a t like a kind of like a teenager, um, and he, you know, a black teenager. And he's like here, and I'm like I'm like here, and then as soon as he started to come out, he had a another friend with him, and they're both, you know, like teenagers, like maybe 17 or something. They're both male black, and they they came out of the resident, and then I got out of my car to kind of like I was gonna like look at the phone by my car. Yeah. So he has the box. One of them he has a box of the phone. And he's walking towards me. The other one's walking towards me. And then they're look, they're look, they're looking at the box. And then I'm like, okay. And then I wanted them to come closer to me. But then we started to meet in the middle of the street. And then I'm like, can I see the phone? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And then he started to walk back towards his residence. So I started to walk towards them. And he's like, all right, let me let me see the cash. And I'm like, can I see the phone first? And he's like. Like, I'll let you see the phone if, if I can see the cash. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, like, 
can you just take the phone out so I can see it before I show you the money? And then all of a sudden, the guy next to him pulls out a gun. He's like, yo, yo, like, give me the cash, give me the cash. And I was like, at that moment, I'm like, oh, shoot. So then I, I'm like, look, look, I'll give you the cash, I'll give you the cash. But then I was like, I didn't want to give them the cash because I was like, if I give you the cash, it doesn't mean that you won't shoot me. Like, that's what's going on in my mind. And I'm like, yo, like, I don't want to take my time to get the money and then just hang out there while they're letting them shoot me. So I'm like, yeah, I'll give you the cash, give you the cash. But then I'm like, run, I'm like walking back. I'm like, yo, I'll give, like, yo, yo, I'm going to give to you. And then, and then at that point, I just booked. Like, I just left my car there and I just started running. And then as I'm running, like, there's other people in the community all looking at me. And I'm worried, like, okay, are these all these people in on this or what? You know, like, people are looking at me running, and then I didn't know somebody else was going to come get me. And I was worried that they might come after me to, to kill me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I start running, and I'm running, and then I see, like, these cars driving fast, like, cars stopping and moving back. I felt like people were, like, looking to chase after me, to kill me or something. So I just kept running and running, and everybody, everybody was African American pretty much in that neighborhood. So I'm running, and I saw like a, like a Hispanic guy, like getting into his, his home, and he looked at me, and I looked at him like, yo, like, can you help me, man? Like, like this is maybe a couple blocks from where it happened. I'm like, you can you help me? Like, do you you know because these people pulled out a gun on me, and like, can you help me? And he's like, you know, there's a gate, and he didn't let me into the gate, but he he got close to me. He's like, what can I help you with? And I'm like, I'm like, like, can you just tell me where I'm at? You know. So I called the police, and then he gave me the address of where, of where we're at. Yeah. The police took down the information, and then they're like, okay, where did this happen? And I told them where it happened, and then they're like, where are you right now? And then um, I gave them the address of where I am right there, and then um, then I called you, yeah. and then the, they sent a squad car. It took like a good amount, good amount of time, maybe at least 10 minutes. And then as I'm waiting, I'm waiting in the alleyway, and I'm worried that they're still looking for me, those people. Like, I'm worried they're trying to still hunt me down. So cars are driving by, and I didn't know if they're, like, looking for me or they're going to come shoot me or something. Cars, some car drew, but drove by with a tinted windows all blacked out. I was worried that it was them. And I was worried that maybe he'll shoot me and this guy that, 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 I'm, that I'm standing next to that's trying to help me a little bit. So I'm just, like, still worried. Like, I felt like I needed to hide so that they don't see where I'm at. You know, so I'm like, I'm waiting in the alleyway. Maybe 10 minutes later, um, the police show up. And the police is like, yo, like, um, like what happened? And I told them like, hey, you know, these guys robbed me at gunpoint. And that's the address is this address. And and I just, I, you know, I want I want my cars over there. I'm like, is it okay if you escort me to get my car back? You know, first I didn't know if they stole my car. I didn't know if they destroyed it. I didn't know what's going on, you know? So he's like, yeah, jump in the car. So I jump into the car with him. And then um, he drives back over there. And then he's like, okay, where did it happen? Like right there. And he's like, okay, um, let me let me, let me me go in there and, and take care of it. You know, you know, get you your money back or whatever. I'm like, they didn't take my money. Like, he's like, oh, he didn't take your money. I'm like, no. Like, and he's like, is that your car? I'm like, yeah, that's my car. And I'm like, is it all right if I just go back in my car and just leave, you know? Yeah. And he's like, do you want to file a report? And I was like, you know. No, I just want to get my car. I just want to get out of here, you know. And then him, he, he had a squad car. Another squad car came. There was two squad cars. Yeah. And then I, I jumped in my car. I looked at everything. My car was fine, and I just drove off. And um, you know, now I'm back at home, and I decided not to to follow police report. Um, but I, I just also wanted to to share, you know, my experiences. So. You know, other people can learn from it, and also just showing like what happened to me, and also like a big thanks to the Chicago police. You know, because they 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 helped me such a great 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 deal. Like I definitely did not feel comfortable going back to my car by myself, because I mean I don't. You know what I'm saying? There's people that just ride me by gunpoint. Yeah. I did not feel comfortable going back there to get my car, but when the police came and they put me in the squad car. And then I had somebody else there to protect me. Then I felt comfortable going back. And you know, if it wasn't for the police, you know, 
like I, I might not you know I don't know how I would have got my car back you know and it's like I'm, I'm just like thankful that that they really they helped me so much in that situation like they were able to to give me that that protection you know and I think like a lot of times especially now like the police are getting so much negative publicity from things that happen but it's like things like this that people also have to like see that how they help people and they, they can't you know and, and how it balances it out like you know like there's not just all corruption like like this situation um i'm i'm very thankful for the police and how they helped you know like that i called 911 and they gave me help you know like nobody else in that situation could have really helped me because i didn't have like a gun or both vest on me or anything and then here's somebody with a gun is trying to threaten my life um and then just thinking about it you know driving back home and you know my life pretty much could have ended right there i mean the person could have just shot me right there and there's really not anything i can really do about it because there's so much distance and it's like not it would have definitely not been a good idea if I even tried to disarm or anything like that you know like like I said you know I don't I don't mind giving the money to protect my life but at that moment I'm like okay just because I give you the money doesn't mean that you're gonna let me live you know what I'm saying so that's why I didn't feel comfortable just giving them money and begging for my life or something like that like I just felt more comfortable handling how how it had how, how it ended up happening you know, and, and I'm thankful that I'm okay. I'm thankful that um, that even my car is okay, and and I didn't even end up losing the money either. Uh, this is a whole learning experience, but like literally, my life could have ended right there, easily. You know, and and that's it's crazy when you think about that. You know, everything's going fine, and then something like this happens, and then everything could change, you know. What made you decide not to um, file a, an official police report? Well, to me, like, in my eyes, like, they could have killed me yeah. easily. And they could have killed me, and they could have, they could have stole my car. They could have destroyed my car, and, um, And it's like I felt like they, even though they robbed me by gunpoint or attempted to, it could have been a lot worse and they could have made that decision to do that. And, but they didn't. So then for me, it's like, I don't, like I want, I don't want them, they, they basically, they, they could have made it so much, they could have did so much worse to me and I don't want to basically go back and try to make it worse for them you know like because they I don't know why why they didn't shoot me they, they could have so and, and, and really if they didn't want to go to jail and say that there's this agreement like hey you know if you don't snitch on me then I won't shoot you it's almost like that type of agreement like, I'm not going to shoot you, but just don't snitch on me. Like, and plus, like, everything happens so fast, and I'm not good at, like, visual recognition for that long. Like, all I know is, like, two male blacks around teenage years. I don't, I don't remember really what they were wearing that much. And, um, it's kind of, like, also showing my face. And they know that, hey, this guy is trying to get us locked up they can easily just hunt me down and get rid of me as well because it's not like there's going to be like a witness protection or whatever the case may be like they'll find they can find me and um my my report in itself of the information that i gave it's not like a formal report as far as like me going into the station but I called it in, I told them what happened. They have it on their recording of the address. Um, 
and the, and the description that I, as far as what I know, what I remember, I gave them that already, so they could use that. But um, as far as me going and identifying them in a lineup and all that stuff, I'm not even sure if I'm able to do that because, like I said, I didn't really get that much of a clear, you know, like I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't even really looking at their faces like that. I was like looking at their hands, their phone, the gun, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything just happens so quick, and I'm just like, I wouldn't be able to identify them, like, facially anyway, really. And I can't even say exactly what colors they're wearing on their clothes. You know, and, like I said, you know, he could have easily shot and killed me. Because, as we're, like, I was saying, I'll give him the stuff, you know, he could have pull, pulled it and boom, but he didn't. And they could have easily tried to, to steal my car, but they didn't. You know, so... Yeah, I mean... What would you do differently? I mean, from the, the, the entire situation, not just... I mean, I, I bought a lot of stuff from, you know, those things before, like Craigslist offer up. My, one of my solutions could be to never buy it from those things again. I mean, that could be a solution. Um, but it was like, as soon as, like, maybe trust my gut, like, as soon as my instinct, as soon as I pulled off into that, that rough neighborhood, mm -hmm. it was a flag. And then as soon as I pulled up in front of the residence, it was a flag. And the fact that I had to feel like I had to unbuckle my seatbelt because I didn't feel safe yeah. was a flag. Um, um, the fact that the picture of the profile didn't match who were selling the phone was a huge flag. You know, and it's maybe, maybe not, I don't know, maybe not agreeing to buy things with cash, but only like through Zelle or something. Maybe that might have helped, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, But maybe meeting in a public location, like a McDonald's or something, or you know where other people are there, like not somebody, not meeting somebody, not to agree to meet somebody at their private residence, yeah. could have helped. Um, I think the biggest thing is your gut feeling. All those red flags that you got. Even even before looking like logistically okay, don't carry cash and maybe even not using the Zelle or the Craigslist and doing that and meeting in a public place because you know things can still go awry there. They can still do um, you know some I don't know false advertising and steal your money through Zelle. I mean you, you go and get something and it ends up not being what was shown in the ad. But I think the most powerful thing is what you felt. It's what you felt. And you, know, you and I talked about instances where you've had gut feelings like that before and they didn't steer you wrong. And I think that's the most powerful thing that you have. It's as soon as you pulled off, you, you felt it. When you pulled into um, up to the resident, you felt it. When you saw that the sellers were not who they were in the profile, you felt it. And all those were opportunities to like, to like change the course of action. And the, the awesome thing about that is that you have that all the time. It's with you all the time. So whenever you feel that, trust it. Like don't second guess yourself. You know, it's, it's, it's there for a reason. And it has shown and proven to work, you know, like you felt all of this stuff and it was for a good reason. It's because this was not 
an actual transaction. These were individuals who were trying to rob you and harm you. And your gut feeling, it, it, it alerted you of that. And I think that that's something that we have to learn as, as individuals is how to trust ourselves, especially in situations like that. Circumstances where we can't explain it, but our gut is like, ah, oh, no, you probably don't want to do that. You know, but really learning to trust, to trust ourselves. And I am just so thankful that you're safe and that nothing happened. I can't imagine getting a different type of phone call. You know, and so I'm thankful for your instinct to run because it's stated that, you know, in situations like that, run for your life instead of trying to fight or talk your way out of it. Run out, get, get the hell out of Dodge, you know. And that's something that Dee said, too. She was like, in circumstances, she said, well, what happened? I said, he ran, he ran. And she said, good, that's what he's supposed to do. Because at that point, another red flag was teenagers. Like, why are teenagers selling me something that's like over a thousand, you know, like thirteen hundred dollars? Yeah. You know, and there's just all these things going on with these carjackings with teenagers involved, teenagers committing crimes and things like that. And and there's two of them, you know. It's not just one, and that's another red flag. Like, why are two people trying to sell, you know? I'm buying something from somebody, but why are there two people? You know, because basically what was happening, I was looking at that one person, and I was already, like, honed in to look, because at first I'm like, okay, you know, what's going on? Why is he, like, why is he, like, requesting to see my money like that right away? And then I'm looking at, I'm, like, already worried, but then I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at his hands. Where are his hands? But while I'm looking at him, the other guy had the gun. Yeah. And then next thing you know, I look at the other guy and I see the gun. And I'm like... And it's like, it's not necessarily just about the money. Because my car is worth way more than the cash. Yeah. And I left the car. But like I said, I didn't want to hang out over there. To just let them take my money and shoot me at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just felt like I had to, like, like that's why I ended up running, you know, and and just, just um, definitely didn't want to. I didn't want to run back to my car because it takes time to start the car and everything, and drive off. That gives him more time to shoot me. You know, so. It was a definitely something that had never happened before, and like you said, you know, paying attention to my instincts. And just being more careful with my dealings with business transactions online. Just also in general, like just just wealth, like your gold, you know, your cash, your watch, your car. Like there's people out there that want those things, and if they see it, you could be a target. You know, even your, like even your phone. But it's just crazy to even think that I just could have died right there. You know? But maybe another thing that I could have done is just update you with a text to, to tell you what, what I'm doing. Because you didn't know. I had no clue until I guess. Nobody knew.
because I, I've done, I mean, I've done a lot of business transactions, you know, and um, this is never, this is, this is crazy. It's never happened to me before, you know. Last time I bought something, I bought like an Xbox from somebody. He told me to meet them at the police station. See? Yeah. Police station. This isn't gonna happen at the police station without the police. Knowing, at least hopefully, without the police knowing. <clears throat> but that's why, depending on how much he was selling it for, and the fact that Xboxes are things that people would want yeah. to take, you know, and so to make that type of request, and then if the person's not willing to meet you at a place like that, then you probably it's probably a good indicator that wasn't a sound transaction anyways you know okay you know there's a police station or fire department that's in the area let's meet there and the police will know why they'll know why someone asks everything okay yeah we're just you know business transaction from higher or was it higher up offer Press up, up. Offer up. Anything else? No. All right. So I wanted to I wanted to share that experience. Um, it's definitely relevant to the martial arts. Relevant to the things that I teach about. And once again, you know, you know, I really I really thankful for the Chicago police. Just the police in general, because this is this is a direct example of you know why we need them. You know, and there's people out there that just really don't care about anything, and they're willing to kill you, you know, for things that they want, and we need protection. So I'm thankful that I didn't, that you know I'm okay, and even my belongings are okay. But I can't forget about what could have happened, and just also just remembering, you know, to appreciate my time here because you don't know um, when your last um, time living will be, you know. <clears throat> 